You know you got me, girl I like the way that you move The way you shake your body, girl I got a whole lot of plans for you Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Erickson Presents Mixing Tutorials um, Today I want to talk to you about money I don't know what it is about money uh, but some people have a hard time talking about the money. That's not me, though. Like, I have no problem. Let's, let's, let's talk about the money the same way we're going to talk it about, um, you know, how do you want your vocals to sound or uh, how, when do you need this buy? Like, I have no problem talking about the money. Um, but a lot of people do. A lot of people, when it comes to money, I don't know, like, I, I don't get it. Um, if you're just now starting out and you're doing this, should you be charging for studio time? I would say no, um, because you're not really that good, right? Like, when you're starting out, you should probably spend a little more time trying to get people in there for free. Um, I would suggest get a crew, um, get some people who you, um, get some people who you think are pretty dope and just rock with them, um, record them, mix them down. Um, if you do music, you know, obviously record your own stuff. But I will also say don't spend too much time tweaking your own stuff in the beginning because you will not really grow um, as an engineer if you only stay mixing your own songs because you're going to spend way more time than you need to on it. Um, but when you mix other people's records, it's different. It's like you, you know you got to get it done. You make different and more permanent decisions um and then you just get it done so i would definitely say in the beginning don't worry about charging people just go ahead and get people in your studio start mixing start uh i mean it's gonna sound like crap in the beginning but that's okay because <laughs> they didn't pay you so um eventually something's gonna happen and your mix is gonna sound dope and you're gonna be like oh man this is dope it's pretty good and i would say how you know when it's time to charge when your mixes are better, th okay, how do I say this? When you know that the, the quality of music that you're giving the artist will potentially make them money. So in the beginning, hold on, my bad, my, one of my partners just came through. Um, my partner did, uh, we were just finished up some last weeks on this album. Uh, but anyways, um, how you know when it's time to, I'm trying to get this right. <laughs> Where was that? I think I was talking about when it's time, how you know when it's time. So yeah, how you know when it's time for you to start charging is when your mixes are good enough that somebody could potentially make some money off of it. There's no reason for you to help other people make money and you not make money off the same thing you just help them do. Um, artists will sell you their dreams. They will tell you anything. They will say that they they've been they have a connect here. They will tell you that I, they have somebody waiting on something. They will tell you whatever they need to tell you so that they can get in there, which is fine. But you need to be compensated. You always need to be compensated for your time if your quality is good enough for someone else to make money. Understand that. Is it okay to do deals? Yeah, it's okay. It's always okay to to barter. It's always okay to if they have a service that you need and you have something that they need. And yeah, go ahead. Like yeah, do a deal. You don't always have to. It doesn't have to be a money transaction, but you need to be getting something out of it for the efforts. If you're gonna give them something that would allow them to make money, so I mean, if anything that I can say that you should get out of it is is your mix is good enough to help someone make money. Because if it is, you need to be paid. Um, I would definitely, it just working off my own experiences, even recent experiences, don't do any more deals, or I wouldn't do any more deals with anyone that isn't requiring them to pay up front without a contract. A verbal contract is cool, but like you might want to start writing these contracts. Well, I mean, Get it in writing. I mean, if somebody's gonna come to you and they, they want you to do something without paying them, 
I would say get a contract written down in a writing that they're going to have to sign and make sure that the contract descriptions or the, the content of the contract only benefits you. So what I mean is you're going to do their project for X amount of dollars, whatever you guys agree upon, make sure that it's agreed upon, but make the stipulations strict for if they don't pay you. So let's say um, if they need to make a payment, one payment a month of X amount of dollars, and if they miss that payment, like in the contract, something needs to be discussed on what happens if a payment is missed. Um, I would even hold their, I would even hold the album in, as hostage, like if you need to. Um, if you want to be paid in full before the album is released, well, then they can't release the album until you're paid in full. Just put that in the contract. They will sign it because they need your help. All this needs to be discussed when they're in a in a state of needing it done because that's when they're going to be more willing um, to try to get it done. Because at the end of the day, they're coming to you for something, but they're not really bringing anything to the table but a dream. And at the end of the day, if you want to, if you want to do, if you want to have a dream, form a crew. But if you we ain't crew. We got to talk about this money. So put it in a contract that if, you know, if, 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 if they come to you and they do this and when their album is out, if the album's not paid in full, well, you can't release the album. And if you do release the album, this happens. And, you know, it doesn't matter what the contract says. If their signature's on the line and you take that to court, the judge is going to look at you like, well, you signed it. So, um, but... It's also okay to do um, percentage deals um, where they have to give you a percentage of, you know, their album. That's cool, too. It's all about what you're okay with. And if you're okay with it, then it's cool. Now, if you feel like, you know what, I can do um, I can do this album for free because the connect is more important. Well, then do the album for free because the connect is more important. Um <laughs> That's all that that that's all I would have to say about that. Um, I personally don't hook people up for the first time. Like I, I give them a discount on the price, but if we've never rocked together ever, like the chances of me doing something for free for you is slim to none. Um, you will have to spend money with me on a consistent basis before you can come to me asking me for a favor. If you if if someone I know. Um, are in a jam and they got they, they need to get something done but I can look and see that they've spent you know endless amounts of sessions with me of course I'm gonna hook them up like we have a relationship built um, but yeah I tend to make sure that I am never the type of person that will be in need of favors um, that's just not how, who I want to be I want to be that person where when, it, when it, you look at between me and you, like, you'll need me before I need you. Like, that's just how I've always been. Um, but you gotta, you also have to understand, now, if you get into a, a, someone needing to come to your studio and you want to charge them, you might want to think about that. Like, am I ever going to need anything from this person? Ever. Because if I am going to need something for them at some point in time, they're probably going to charge me um, because I charge them. Um so like these are all the type of things you need to think about um, in the very beginning. I, I don't think money should be um, on your mind. But once it is a priority, because you are dope, I'm going to probably talk about what I never see anybody on YouTube talk about. The prices. So where is your studio at? Are you in a building or are you in your house in a room? Those two things have two different prices. If you're at home, it's going to be a lower price than if you're in a building. Um, mainly because you don't really like don't charge in the beginning. Don't think about charging like you don't want to charge something over overcharge. That's not what you want to do. There's so many people out here doing this. There's no reason to overcharge. Just give good quality and give a good price. If you give good quality and good price, people will come to you because they're going to feel like they got a deal. So if it's in your house, you know, I would say start off with fifteen twenty dollars an hour um if after that you feel like okay i'm doing way more work than the amount of money that i'm receiving so when you feel like man 
I didn't even charge that much, but I sure did a lot of work. It's time to raise your prices because you always want to make sure that you're fairly compensated for what you're doing. Um, I, ironically, the better you get, the less work you're going to have to do because you'll just be dope. Um, also, when you buy new equipment, you, uh, that equipment costs money and you're buying new equipment and it's helping everybody out because now your their stuff sounds better, like your prices have to go up. Um, so at that point, I would say keep raising. I, I think when I first started, I was charging 25 an hour. Um, but that was after I was able to get a decent sound out of my equipment. Um, so you just got to keep, as long as you feel like when the session is over and you're paid and you feel like I am fairly compensated for this, I don't feel like I undercharged. I don't feel like I was taken advantage of, then that's the price that you need to charge. Um, I don't know that price for you. Um, $20 an hour for you might be a lot of money for the next person might not be enough money. Um, so yeah, that's the money uh, side of things. I definitely think that we as engineers, we are the most important piece. I don't care what anybody says, like we're the important piece that nobody ever wants to talk about because you got the producer, you got the artist, you got all that, but if without us, none of that's gonna sound good anyway. So the engineer should be taken care of because we are the ones who are making and breaking the sound of each one of these artists. Um, so that's just my opinion on that. Anyhow, if you uh, would like to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, bell notification button and, you know, learn something. Um, I do have a tip jar. So if I ever give you some information that you feel helped you out, go ahead and shoot your boy a tip. The link will be in the description. Um, other than that, I hope you guys had a good day. Today is Friday. Um, I got to go out and get some money. So until we meet again. Tomorrow. You know you got me, girl. Tomorrow, girl. I like the way that you move, the way you shake your body, girl. I got a whole lot of plans for you.